Hello, and here is my opinion on the Club Sport version 2.5 and the DD1 from Fanatec. Uh, they, they're a little bit hard to compare uh, as they're, they're kind of based on different technologies, but the Club Sport is probably the best uh, best driven force feedback wheelbase you can get. It's it's taken that technology as far as anyone has, but potentially even as far as it can go. Uh, that's sad because it's so great. Uh, when I went from the club's work to the DD1, I didn't really uh, had much of a difference other than weight. Uh, I found a lot more difference when I went back from the DD1 to the club's work. I've run both a few weeks now. And uh, the difference when I went back from the from D1 to the Club Sport is everything is just somewhat more refined in this. The the, the feedback is slightly more realistic. Uh, it doesn't necessarily give you a clearer message of what's going on with the road, but the message feels more realistic, right? So that's that. Uh, <laughs> this is amazing. The feeling of this wheel is amazing. You might ask why why is the club sport mounted? Well, it's mounted because I'm keeping a club sport, not this. Even if it is a much, much better, well, I'll take one of those mudges back and just say it's a much better wheel base. Uh, better refined feedback, a uh, lot more torque if you want or need that, which I don't really do. Uh, there's plenty in the club sport. The main reason is this thing is heavy. It's uh, it's almost thirty pounds, and that's not counting this humongous power bar that comes with it. This is probably another four pounds or so. Uh, and if I was running in a, a fixed space, that wouldn't matter. And I'd be keeping this. However, <laughs> this is a motion rig, and weight matters. For comparison, you can see that I'm running triple monitors, triple 29-inch ultra-wide monitors. The weight of all three of these monitors is less than this. Yep, it is less. And so, for me, the choice is kind of, do I want to have a direct drive wheel base or do I want triple monitors? And that's not really, it's not really a hard choice to make. Um, so I'm going to stick with the club sport. Uh, when I went back to the club sport, as I mentioned, I did feel it was not as good. Uh, and that kind of stuck with me. I guess for the first week, I was a little bit annoyed that it, I wasn't running on the DD. Uh, now I'm kind of over it. Club sport is fine. It's, the feedback is, is good. Uh, it's not as refined or realistic as in the DD1, but I don't really feel it anymore unless I'm comparing them side by side. So this is the base for me. Um, other annoyances that I had with the, with the DD1 is that the power button is on the back here. And depending on your mounting scenario, that can be hard to reach and annoying. So uh, you can get around that problem by, by buying the uh, emergency switch off button because it also has a power on, power off, I believe. Um, and another annoyance, whoa. The power bar. Uh, there's a fan in it, it never stops, even when the base is turned off. So my recommend recommendation is that if you're going to run the DD1, you should get a uh, power distribution unit PDU that has a reset button on it, so you can just turn both off when, when you're not using it. That should also solve the problem of not reaching a power button on the back of the DD1. Uh, although, with that, ma that much torque, you want to have that emergency cutoff button because that can rip your fingers off yeah. on a bad day. Yeah. I'm sure there's a safety mechanism in there, but yeah, anyway, yeah, it's softer. There's going to be bugs, so be careful. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it on my opinion of uh, these two bases. I'm going to stay with the clubs for it. It's a fantastic base. It's not as good as the DD1. So if money is no concern and weight is no concern, 
the DD1 is absolutely the way to go. Now, it's more than double the price of the club fort, and the club fort is fantastic, so you may want to consider that. Also, you may want to consider the weight, if that's a concern for you, as it is for me. Both of them have, have a great uh, quick release mechanism to change wheels. I do that a lot. I run like a round wheel for, for rally and uh, an open wheel for, for open wheel cars. Um, which I like to do. Uh, if, uh, if that's not, however, not something you want to do, if you just want to run one wheel, uh, you could save yourself some money and just get a CSL or, or even a high end Thrustmaster uh, low spaces. Although I've never used the GSL, but uh, the hand thrustmasters they really good for feedback also, uh, and uh, but then again they can come pretty close to the price of this also. So uh, to each their own on that. Uh, reason why I'd not recommend any of those for if you want to change your wheel regularly. Uh, the thrustmaster has a screw on thing that it comes loose unless you put a sat screw in there and if you have to put the sat screw in there what's the point it's not a quick release anymore right kind of the same thing with the with the csl although you can i believe use club sport and podium wheels with the csl which would then make it properly properly uh, quick release but then again uh, the fan attack wheels are expensive especially in the club sport and podium range that's it fantastic basis I'm going to go with a slightly less fantastic because it's lighter. Thanks.